connection might have languished had it not been for Raymond Brown, a San Diego physician and adventurer. He believes he has found conclusive links between a Caribbean civilization and those of Egypt and Central America. Dr. Brown's story begins uneventfully on an expedition out of Miami in 1970. Here, recreated, Dr. Brown was headed for an area between Andros Island and the Berry Islands, approximately 100 miles from Bimini. His intention was not to prove or disprove stories about Atlantis, but rather to search for sunken treasure. We've been searching the area for a number of years for Spanish galleons and had found several and taken some of the uh, treasure and we were very excited when we found this area. They traveled to a spot near the tongue of the ocean. There the bottom drops to 14,000 feet. Dr. Brown hoped that a recent storm might have shifted bottom sand in order to reveal the galleons. water was very murky and uh, we didn't get to see all that we would like to have seen but after the storm uh, moved the sand for us that we'd been digging on for several years unsuccessfully we found ruins and uh, buildings everywhere much of dr. Brown's photographic equipment was destroyed in the storm thus making it impossible for a detailed record of the find We really had no choice because if we had gone back for uh, new equipment that we lost during the storm, if we hadn't got in the water even as murky as it was, we, the sand would have covered the buildings up and we would have lost the view. The ruins of the city Dr. Brown claims he found reflected a sophisticated level of architectural design. The buildings had somewhat of an Egyptian or classic look to them. Uh, the ground mass was rippled as though the area had been dropped into the ocean by some sort of cataclysmic action. Then, Dr. Brown reported that he came across the most magnificent find of all. In the murkiness, he spotted the tip of a submerged pyramid, barely visible above the ocean floor. Looking at the structure, shape, and the size, it would be approximately 400 feet tall. Uh, I went in an opening, and in this opening, in the center of the room, there was a pedestal. And on the pedestal were two human hands made of brass or bronze. And in the center of the hands was the crystal. My first uh, impression in the, in the room was the uh, shaft that was metallic, hanging straight down from the ceiling, pointing at the crystal and it was gold color. I swam, because it was still, uh, the room was full of water, I swam up to the ceiling and tried to pry the uh, rod loose. It wouldn't budge, so I settled back down to the floor. And I reached my hand in between the fingers of the uh, metal hands and I found the crystal was loose. And it was the only thing in the room that I could take home. The crystal bulb seems to possess powers that can repel a coiled stainless steel rod. We found a meter with a one and a half ounce weight and it becomes sensitive to emanations, uh, particularly magnetic emanations around people or things if they are charged. We find that if we can hold it straight without uh, allowing it to flip from side to side, some strong influences will actually raise the weight in the air. Now, as we bring something into the field of the crystal, the ions tend to repel. If I can keep it balanced and bring it directly into the field and not let it tip from side to side, the weight will then not go to the side if I can keep it centered. And it will, as I come higher, it will raise it and make it weightless and actually float in the air. Some historians say the crystals were the source of Atlantean power. 
Dr. Brown believes his crystal is evidence that such a culture existed and possessed powers unknown to modern man. Maybe the ancients knew more than we did about uh, life forms and life forces, and we might discover their secret. In the last decade of exploration in the waters off Bimini, new finds cause us to question old theories. Atlantis has long been thought of as a myth, a figment of fanciful imagination, a tale told by Plato to amuse ancient Athens. But what of Dr. Brown's crystal? Dr. Marcel Vogel, a researcher at IBM, has devoted more than 20 years of investigation to determine the power of crystals and their effect on human potential. Throughout history, the earliest recorded history we have, there's been a deep respect for the shape of a ball and the use of a quartz crystal ball for probing in the mind of an individual. Now I've worked with Dr. Brown's crystal ball. I used his ball and I felt a tremendous energy burst coming from the crystal. The discovery of the crystal has spawned speculation that possible misuse of its powers by Atlanteans caused the great cataclysm. The island and all its buildings, it is said, were plunged into the sea. The Bimini Wall, therefore, might be the last visible relic of that lost civilization. Divers have always searched for hidden treasures of the sea. In the waters off Bimini may lie the clues that not only unlock the mystery of Atlantis, but the secrets of the mind as well. For the present, however, we must content ourselves with the inconclusive bits of evidence so far uncovered. The origin of the Bimini Wall seems destined to remain an enigma until more knowledge about Atlantis is revealed.